Chapter Twenty Two of Mary Louise by Edith Van Dyne. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter Twenty Two, The Folks at Bigby's. Mr. Conant decided to take the Friday morning train back to Dorfield, saying it would not be possible for him to remain at the lodge over Sunday because important business might require his presence in town. "'This demise of Mrs. Burroughs,' he said confidentially to his wife in the privacy of their room, "'may have far-reaching results, and turn the whole current of Colonel Weatherby's life.' "'I don't see why,' said Aunt Hannah. "'You're not expected to see why,' he replied. "'As the Colonel is my most important client, I must be at the office in case of developments or a sudden demand for my services. I will tell you one thing, however.' and that is that this vacation at hillcrest lodge was planned by the colonel while i was in new york with the idea that he and mrs burroughs would come here secretly and enjoy a nice visit with mary louise you planned all that peter yes that is weatherby planned it he knows will morrison well and will was only too glad to assist him so they wired me to come to New York, where all was quickly arranged. This place was so retired that we considered it quite safe for the fugitives to come here. Why didn't they come, then? Two reasons prevented them. One was the sudden breaking of Mrs. Burroughs' health. The other reason was the Colonel's discovery that in some way our carefully laid plans had become known to the detectives who are seeking him good gracious are you sure of that peter the colonel seems sure he maintains a detective force on his own account and his spies discovered that hillcrest is being watched by agents of the secret service dear me what a maze of deceit wailed the good woman i wish you were well out of the whole affair peter and i wish mary louise was out of it too so do i with all my heart but it's coming to a focus soon hannah be patient and it may end better than we now fear so bub drove mr conant to millbank and then the boy took the car to the blacksmith shop to have a small part repaired the blacksmith made a bungle of it and wasted all the forenoon before he finally took bub's advice about shaping it and the new rod was attached and found to work successfully it was after one o'clock when the boy at last started for home and on the way was hailed by a stranger a little man who was trudging along the road with both hands thrust in his pockets going far he asked up the mountain to hillcrest said bub oh may i have a lift how fur well i can't say how far i'll go i'm undecided just came out here for a little fresh air you know with no definite plans explained the stranger hop in said bub and for a time they rode together in silence this ere's the huddle as we're comin to announced the boy old miss parsons she sometimes takes boarders that's kind of her remarked the stranger but the air isn't so good as further up the hill if ye go up said bub with a grin guess ye'll ha to camp out and eat scrub nobody don't take boarders up the mountain i suppose not he made no demand to be let out at the huddle so bub drove on by the way said the little man isn't there a place called bigby's near here comin to it pretty soon they some gals livin there now so you won't care to stop what sort of girls are they sort of queer yes ye bet ye comin from the city a while ago and livin by they sell somethin wrong about them gals added bub reflectively in what way asked the little man in a tone of interest they ain't here for nothin special sept watchin the folks at hellcrest them's the folks i belongs to for four bits a week there's something queer about them too but i guess all the folks is queer that comes here from the city quite likely agreed the little man nodding let me out at bigby's please and i'll look over those women and form my own opinion of them they may perhaps be friends of mine in that case asserted bub i pity ye stranger for my part 
I ain't got no use for anything that wears skirts, except one or two, maybe, he added reflectively. Most men I can get along with fust rate, but if a man ever gets in trouble or begins cussin' and acts ugly, it's cause some gals rubbed him crossways the grain air stuck a knife in him and twisted the blade, so to speak. You're an observant lad, I see. When I'm awake, I can't help seeing things. And you're a pastoral philosopher. Bub scowled and gave him a surly glance. What's the use firing that highbrow stuff at me? He asked indignantly. I suppose you think I'm a kid just because I don't do no fancy talking. I suspect you of nothing but generosity in giving me this ride, said the stranger pleasantly. Is that Bigby's over yonder? Yes. The little man got out at the point where the Bigby Drive met the road, and walked up the drive toward the house. Agatha Lord was standing at the gateway, as he approached it, and seemed rather startled at his appearance. But she quickly controlled her surprise, and asked in a calm voice as she faced him, "'What's up, O'Gorman?' "'Hathaway's coming here,' he said. "'Are you sure?' "'He's in Dorfield today, waiting to see Lawyer Conant, who went in on the morning train. Where's Nan?' here my lord said nan shelley stepping from behind a tall shrub how are you partner i recognized you as you passed the huddle with the boy field glasses eh there isn't much escapes you nan why didn't you tell me asked agatha reproachfully why don't you make your own discoveries retorted her confederate then turning to o'gorman she continued so hathaway's coming is he at last a little late but according to program how have you been getting along bored to death asserted nan agatha has played the lady and i've done the dirty work but tell me why didn't you nab hathaway at dorfield o'gorman smiled a little grimly as he answered i'm not sure nan that we shall nab hathaway at all isn't he being shadowed with some surprise no but he'll come here right enough and then and then she added as he paused the chase of years will come to an end exactly we may decide to take him to washington and we may not she gazed at him inquiringly there are some new developments then o'gorman i'm inclined to suspect there are known to the department yes i'm to investigate and use my judgment i see then agatha and i are out of it not yet i'm still depending on your shrewdness to assist me the office has only had a hint so far of the prospective break in the case but oh yes i remember now exclaimed nan that girl up at conant's sent a telegram in a desperate hurry i suspected it meant something important who is she o'gorman and why did the chief cut us under by planting sarah judd in the conant's household he didn't the girl has nothing to do with the department then some of you intercepted the telegram we know what it said he admitted come let's go to the house i've had no lunch can you feed me certainly they turned and walked slowly up the path said nan musingly that sarah judd is rather clever o'gorman is she in hathaway's pay i think not he replied with an amused chuckle nan tossed her head indignantly very well play me for a ninny if you like she said resentfully you'll get a heap more out of me in that way now now said agatha warningly keep your tempers and don't quarrel you two are like cats and dogs when you get together yet you are the two cleverest people in the service according to your story mr o'gorman there's an important crisis approaching and we'd all like to be able to render a good account of ourselves agatha lord may have lacked something of nan's experience but this speech proved her a fair diplomat it dispersed the gathering storm and during the rest of that afternoon the three counselled together in perfect harmony o'gorman confiding to his associates such information as would enable them to act with him intelligently hathaway and peter conant could not arrive till the next day at noon they might even come by the afternoon train nan's field glasses would warn them of the arrival and meanwhile there was ample time to consider how they should act End of chapter twenty two